In this video, we're going to start to talk about the chain rule. And there are several versions of the chain rule. The first is Leibniz's version. That's what we're going to mostly talk about in this video. It says if you've got three variables, x, y, and z, and y depends on x, and z depends on y, and so indirectly depends on x, then the derivatives are related in this way. The second version looks very different, and that one's due to Newton. And then there's a third hybrid version. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to talk about the Leibniz uh, version. In the next video, we're going to talk about Newton and the hybrid. OK, so the chain rule is about exchanges. So let's think about currency exchange. <clears throat> right now, a British pound is worth about $1.25. And the US dollar is worth about 20 Mexican pesos. So how many pesos is a pound worth? Now, this is a pretty easy problem. You say a pound is worth $1.25, and $1.25 is 20 pesos. So you just multiply it out, and you get that a pound is worth 25 pesos. Okay. The conversion factors multiply. If you multiply by 1.25 to go from pounds to dollars, and from 20 to get, go from dollars to pesos, then you multiply by 1.25 times 20 to go directly from pounds to pesos. Now let's talk about calculus. If we have three variables, x, y, and z, they're related. You change one of them, you change the others. And if z dz dy is 1.25, which is to say that z changes by 1.25 for every amount that y changes. And if dy dx is 20, which is to say that y changes by 20 times as much as x does, then what's dz dx? And I claim that you should think of these derivatives as conversion factors. If you change y a little bit, then how much does z change? Well, dz dy times delta y is approximately delta z, because dz dy was the limit of delta z over delta y. And so this is about 1.25 times delta y. And delta y is approximately 20 delta x. So delta z is 1.2 delta y, which is 1.2 times 20 times delta x. So it's 25 delta x. So the conversion factor between delta x and delta z is 25. The change in z is 25 times as big as the change in x. So the derivative of z with respect to x must be 25. So our conversion factors multiply just like with currency. If somebody tells you how much x changes, you multiply by dy dx to figure out how much y changed. And you multiply that by dz dy to figure out how much z changed. So if you want to go straight from x to z, you multiply by dy dx times dz dx. And that's the same thing as multiplying by so times dz dy. And that's the same as multiplying by dz dx. So let's see how this works in practice. <clears throat> so suppose that y is x squared and z is the sine of y. In other words, z is the sine of x squared. And we want to figure out what is the derivative of the sine of x squared with respect to x. Well, since z is sine y, we know that dz dy is cosine of y. And since y is x squared, we know that dy dx is 2x. So dz dx is 2x times cosine of y. Now, be careful. It's not 2x times cosine of x. It's 2x times cosine of y. So it's 2x times cosine of x squared. And that's the derivative of sine of x squared. Or if you wanted to know the derivative of e to the x plus 7 to the fifth power, you'd have to figure out what is y. And here, the most useful thing to call y is the thing in parentheses. So if you let y be e to the x plus 7, then z is y to the fifth. And then dy dx is going to be e to the x. dz to the y is 5y to the fourth. You multiply them together, and you get that dz dx is 5y to the fourth e to the x. 
So that's 5 e to the x plus 7 to the fourth, all times e to the x. Now, the nice things about, about Leibniz's form is first that it makes clear why the chain rule works. It's just like the currency exchange. And the second is that it can handle what are called related rates problems. So for example, let's suppose I'm blowing up a balloon at, and I'm pumping in air at 3.7 cubic feet per minute. How fast does the radius of the balloon grow? Here are three variables are the volume, the radius, and time. And we're told that dvdt, the rate at which we're pumping air into the balloon, is 3.7 cubic feet per minute. But we also know from geometry that the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So you take a derivative and you get dvdr is 4 pi r squared. And now the chain rule says dv dt is dv dr times dr dt. Well, we know what v dt, dv dt is. We know what v d, dv dr is, so we can solve for dr dt. 3.7 is 4 pi r squared dr dt. So dr dt is 3.7 cubic feet per minute divided by 4 pi r squared. So for example, when r is 1 foot, then R is growing at a rate of 0.294 feet per minute. But when R is 10 feet, we're talking about a big balloon here. Maybe it's a weather balloon or something. When R is 10 feet, dr dt is 0 0.00294 feet per minute. Small balloons seem to grow a whole lot faster than the big balloons, which you may have noticed whenever you've blown up a party balloon. The first breath, whoosh, the thing is, seems to be uh, expanding really quickly, and then you have to blow a whole lot to get it to expand anymore. It's all the chain rule.